Hey everybody, Stinger here with a special message, message, a special thank you to the best Italian wrestling podcast. That's right, the best Italian wrestling podcast called Pro Wrestling Culture. Specifically, thank you to Aldo Fiadoni. All right, Aldo, awesome job, man. I guess you and I met in New York in 2019. And there were some tears shed there. <laughs> Man, I love that. I love that. You know what? Real men can cry, bro. Let me tell you something. Man, it means a lot that you watch. It means a lot that uh, this podcast is happening and the, the pro wrestling culture appreciates Aldo Fiadoni. So be watching there. It's going to be showtime. And tune in to the podcast, Pro Wrestling Culture, because it's always showtime there from the stinger. Questo programma non è soggetto a infezioni. Wrestling Culture, a podcast available on World Wrestling, Spreaker, Spotify, Radio Libera Tutti, and many more. So, I am the real messiah, Aldo Fiadone, and here with me, the face of success, and many more, Alex Flash. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Welcome, welcome back on grazie, PwC. Grazie. And Alex, we have a special guest, the coach of the coaches. Okay, <laughs> we have right now, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Silvio. All I right. Know. Hello, guys. Thank you, Real Messiah, for having me. Uh, yes, this is NWA's Chris Silvio and owner and You're coach welcome. of Death Proof Dojo in Tampa, Florida. And um, one of the brains, along with Alex Flash, the face of success, behind SIW Wrestling, the biggest wrestling organization in Italy. Um, what's up, boys? How's it going today? Super fine, Chris. Now you're Very here, good. super Very fine. Good. So happy you're yes. here with us. <laughs> All right. Messiah, you look kind of rock and roll, man. I think you and I might get along off the air. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, uh, Tell us about uh, your beginnings in wrestling business. That's a long time ago. Um, it's it's kind of hard to remember because I've been doing this uh, stuff for so long. Um, Alex, or does the language have to be clear on here or swearing aloud? What kind of rules are there? Do we know? Uh, you can go. <laughs> Say whatever Chiedesi. I want. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Può dire qualsiasi cosa voglia, diciamo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's hard to remember all the shit that I've been through. It's, um, I started wrestling at around 10 years old on the amateur level, um, competing in, okay. in competitive wrestling all over the States of Virginia, where I grew up and all over the United States. Um, the biggest place I ever wrestled as an amateur was this crazy stadium, um, called the Fargo Dome in Fargo, North Dakota. And it's still to this day, the biggest crowd I've ever been in front of. And it seats somewhere around 18, 20,000 people. And this was as a kid, as a teenage kid. Um, but I started uh, getting into pro wrestling around age 17, um, started in my area, Virginia, North Carolina area. 
And um, things really started to pick up for me when I went to OVW um, to begin training under the legendary Rip Rogers. That's when I really started to learn and understand the business of professional wrestling and get really, really good at it under some great minds. Um, Rip being one, Jim Cornette being another man that I learned so much from, Al Snow, and then just some of my fellow performers. When, when I moved to OVW, it was a WWE developmental territory. So there were so many good wrestlers there that you had no choice but to be good. If you were the shits, you were not going to get used. You would not be on TV. You would not be on house shows. So you had to be good. I mean, there was a time where there were guys like CM Punk, Matt Seidel, um, on the roster all at the same time. So it was super competitive. Um, but yeah, that I would say that's the most important part of my origins, my amateur background, and uh, coming to developmental at OVW and really learning how to be a pro yes. wrestler. But uh, you learned it from many people, and right now you are a coach, okay? And uh, how do you feel with uh, this status right now? Of being a coach? Yes, yes. Um, I love it, man. Um, I, I started coaching right out of high school. Um, so like I told you guys before, I was an amateur wrestler for many years, competitive wrestler. And when I graduated, um, I went to wrestle in university and I went back and coached my high school team. So that's where I kind of started learning how to be a decent coach, coaching um, high school wrestlers. And I'd been in pro wrestling about three years. And my friends and I decided we were going to start our own promotion in Richmond, Virginia. It was a real hip, cool, rock and roll, artsy scene, like a really like don't give a fuck type of attitude, very punk rock. And um, we just thought like a young, edgy pro wrestling show would do really well in our city. And we were right. Um, so we put together just this crazy show. Like you see things now like GCW and they do a good job. I'll give yes. GCW credit. We were doing that in 2003, four, five, six, seven, before anyone else had thought of it. We kind of found our audience that wanted to see that kind of wrestling and put it together. So I was the best wrestler at the time of our whole group. And as our company expanded, we needed new wrestlers and we needed somebody to train them. So everybody just kind of looked at me and was like, well, Chris, you're a high school coach. You're good at wrestling. Uh, okay, it's going to be your job to train the new people that we bring in to work for our promotion, which was called Richmond Lucha Libre. So I've actually been coaching pro wrestlers since I was about three years in mm. the business. So at this point, around 18 years of coaching, I'd say 10 years of that has been very serious, high level coaching. Um, but I've been coaching almost as long as I've been wrestling. So it's natural for me. I love doing it. I love teaching people, and Alex can tell you this better than anyone. I love teaching people how to become great wrestlers and how to understand the business and the way it works. Like when I explain something to them and see them do it, and I can see in their mind where they begin to understand it, that's a really good feeling for me as a coach because I feel like I'm just adding to the future of a business that I love so much. There are so many assholes in pro wrestling that don't care. They don't want to make people better. They are only thinking about themselves. Absolutely. Um, that's the opposite of me, man. Like I, when I'm on the show or on a microphone, I can be the biggest asshole you've ever met. But as a coach um, mm -hmm. and just somebody who mentors a lot of wrestlers, I want to create the next generation or two generations of pro wrestlers. I want this thing to be around for my grandkids and I want it to be better than ever. So that's kind of my attitude towards coaching. I take it very seriously. I demand a lot out of my students, but I give them more than any coach on the planet. And Flash can <laughs> attest to that. <laughs> so about, about Alex, uh, how did you meet him? One of the greatest promoters here in Italy, Alex Flash. Uh, it has been crazy because I thought um, I was on Facebook and was checking about some shit on Facebook, but then okay. I noticed that some, somebody uh, wrestle 
uh, was having uh, her birthday. So his birthday. So I was there uh, watching Facebook and say, hey, I got this Chris Silvio. Let me check his, his birthday today. And I was just curious. I was just like, let, let me see where he wrestled now. I was just checking, checking, checking. Hey, but he's a coach. So that, that's from there. We started to speak because I texted him telling him, hey, please, uh, we really would like to be uh, better than today, <laughs> tomorrow. So can you please uh, uh, meet us here in Pisa and having a seminar? Can you have a seminar for us here? And I wanted to have a very close seminar just for advanced level, just because... Uh, I've done many, many seminars around Italy and Europe with many, many athletes, but that was the first one I've ever done with a coach. So that was the, great, the greatest day of my pro wrestling career because in this moment I realized, wow, I, need, I really need a coach if I want to improve myself. I don't care what seminars around the world. I just want to be prepared because I... I who can prepare you better than a coach? So uh, first, that was just one day training. By the and way, I was Alex, like, yes. Alex, can I add something to that real quick? Yeah. To, any, to anybody that's wondering, Alex Flash is 100% a heel. He looks through my yes. uh, Facebook yeah, on my birthday and didn't even wish me a happy birthday. But he did book me for a seminar, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, yes, continue. Yes, but that's because I'm healed. <laughs> I hey, know. Go that's hey, go go <laughs> that's it. You know, that's how we play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, after this, this afternoon training, it was just the just the after Wednesday afternoon. Uh, me and Tempesta were like, yes, but that was impressive. That was the best day of pro wrestling training we have ever had. So it was like, I want to try one thing. I want to try to tell him if he wants to uh, coach us from abroad, even from abroad. Uh, I didn't want, like, want him as a coach. So I was like, hey, Chris, uh, I got this idea, blah, 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 blah. And then we had a video call in which Chris told me, Yes, but we can do it better than this. So that's where we started. He, he was here with us 2018, 2019, early 2020, first months. Then COVID, uh, COVID stops that stuff. But COVID didn't stop the relationship between me, SAW, and Coach Chris. For me, Chris is the best coach in the world. And that's because if SAW today is, uh, is like this, mainly that's because he taught us how to be professional. And I think that's the best thing in life if you want to be a pro wrestler. And I think uh, Chris Silvio will be back in uh, superior Italian wrestling one day. <laughs> So <laughs> I love you know, it. there's there's a very good chance of that. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, I can't predict it, but um don't be surprised. And if I am back, um real messiah, I will give you a maybe 10% discount on a ticket. Does that sound good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> fair. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> That's fair, right? But no, I, I remember um the first time I went in and, and met Alex. Um It was cool. He, you know, I was working around Europe. At the, I uh, divided my time between wrestling in America and basing myself out of Manchester, England. So I would work all around Europe and um, for a few months then come home to the States, do some television in the States, do some independent bookings and go back. So I did that for a few years and I get the contact from Alex one day for a seminar in, in Pisa. I'm like, oh, why not? I've never been to Pisa. That sounds cool. Um, but what I always appreciated about Alex and his team Um, is once I got there, um, they're very welcoming and they take care of you. Um, Puerto Rico, the, I'm Puerto Rican for the most part and a little bit Italian. Um, and we're very hospitable. Like when we have a, a guest 
we take them in, we feed them, we make sure they're good. So I noticed Italian culture is very similar. 